Could this be the ultimate sound card I'm looking for? Or at least the ultimate Gravis sound card? It may as well could be with the name such as Extreme. This is gonna be kind of double review. First Gravis Ultrasound Extreme as a sound card, and second ESS Audio Drive ES1688 sound chip, which is a part of the sound card. This kind of setup was very unique. It was the first, but unfortunately also the last Gravis sound card that was fully compatible with Sound Blaster Pro. Well, it was the last Gravis sound cards actually. It was basically Ultrasound Classic with ESS sound chip on board, and that made it unique even among other Ultrasound cards. The GF1 chip survived for quite a long time. Classic was released in 91 and Extreme in 95. It's probably the rarest and also the most expensive of all Gravis sound cards today. I got lucky I got this card in exchange for Sound Blaster or 64 Gold. When I checked the prices on eBay, some bloke wanted a thousand quid for this card. That's insane. Advanced Gravis had released four sound cards and one daughter board over their short lifetime. It's not that many compared to billion sound cards released by Creative Labs. On the other hand, even though Gravis released such a small number of sound cards, these cards are unique on so many levels. They're red PCBs, sound clarity, sound quality, very special kind of wavetable, and their incompatibility. And the last one is basically what this card is all about compared to the other models. If you want to know more about Gravis's history, I've made a short video about it. Well, to be proper, I have to say that Ultrasound Extreme wasn't even produced by Gravis. It was produced by Synergy and it came out in three different versions under three different names. First version is this one. It's called Ultrasound VIP and it's got one half Mac memory module soldered on the PCB and one slot for SOJ memory module. Second version was named Viper Max. It was the same card, only with two half Mac memory modules soldered on. And lastly and finally, Ultrasound Extreme. On again, it was the same card with a different name. The half Mac of RAM was upgradable to 1 MB for instrument patches. I put another half Mac of RAM into the slot, so I ended up with 1 MB. It's not much, but that's all I've got. If you want to use default instrument patches that came with installation CD, half Mac of RAM is enough. But with 1 MB, you'll get better quality. Gravis doesn't use single bank with all the instruments packed inside, which needs lots of memory to load. Instead, it uses single file for one instrument, so it loads only the instruments it needs for the current track. There are of course some unofficial patches out there, some are quite good and some are not. One megabyte of RAM is enough for most of them, some however need more, and the only cards in the Gravis family that can take more RAM is Ultrasound Plug and Play. Most famous patch set is called Pro Patches Lite. I've tried the latest version which is 161 and the difference is quite big. For every game that supports Gravis I'll record both, official and Pro Patches so we can compare those two. This is how Doom sounds for example. <laughs> All Gravis sound cards always suffered from Sound Blaster compatibility issues, but this card got rid of it quite elegantly by adding ESS sound chip to the bloody card. While keeping compatibility with all the Gravis cards by using GF1, adding ES1688 meant it became also compatible with Sound Blaster Pro. All the Gravis cards needed an emulator to emulate Sound Blaster Pro, but it was always a little bit dodgy, or maybe I'll call that what that really was, shite. This card is a different beast though. For games that are missing Gravis support, you don't need to use some crappy emulator anymore, you can use some Blaster Pro in game setup directly. And for both, sound effects on FM music. Since ESS chip is really good in terms of compatibility, sound clarity or FM playback, this card should be one of the best out there. But we'll see about that. Since there are two chips on board, GF1 and ESS, I'll have to find out which one produces less noise, and thus which one is more suitable for sound effects playback. All of the older Gravis sound cards, Classic, Max and PMP needed emulators to get some of the older games working. SBOS, which is purely Sound Blaster emulator, on Mega EM, which can emulate Sound Blaster, General MIDI, Sound Canvas on MT32. Ultrasound Extreme installation doesn't come with either of those, because honestly you don't need them at all, but I tried to run them anyway. SBOS didn't work at all, it couldn't find any Gravis card. The problem with Mega EM is that it doesn't work if you've got more than 64 megabytes of RAM. 
So, I've installed 32 megs of RAM to be sure, ran the Mega AM program and they didn't work either. I was a little bit disappointed, but as I said before, these emulators are not needed really. I just wanted to test it. Classic was one of the first sound cards that was able to play sounds in 16-bit 44kHz. On since Extreme uses the same chip, it's able to play sounds in the same resolution. However, Extreme came out 4 years later after the Classic, so it's nothing special anymore. And of course, ES1688 can do the same. GF1's got one little drawback when playing sound effects though. Even though it is able to play up to 32 channels simultaneously, the problem is it is able to play only 14 channels in full resolution. More channels than that, it lowers the playback rate with each step. For example, when playing 20 channels, the rate is about 31 kHz, and when playing all 32 channels, the rate goes down to 19 kHz. There's one big advantage to GF1 though. It uses hardware mixer which means it uses its own power instead of computer CPU to mix the channels and thus it won't impact the performance on slower systems like 3A6 or 4A6. On these systems it's a better idea to use GF1 instead of ESS. This is the card's backplate and as you may have noticed there's no speaker out, which makes it a bit difficult to use with the headphones. You can of course connect your headphones to the line out but it may be too quiet. Lineout works best with some kind of amplifier or active speakers because there is no amplifier on the card, which is a good thing, there is one less crap on the card that could interfere with sound quality. Next to the lineout are line-in, mic-in and game port for joystick or external MIDI module. Unfortunately there is no wave blaster connector, so if you want to use a different wavetable, you either need external MIDI module connected through the game port or a different sound card. As usually, there's an ID connector for connecting CD-ROM drives. I wonder if anyone ever used this connector. Next to it are all types of audio CD connectors, which is a nice touch, but it's missing PC speaker connector. There are no jumpers on the card, so the resources like IRQ or DMA have to be set up by drivers. The driver installation in DOS is as easy as with other Gravis sound cards. Just run the installation program, follow the instructions and that's it. Set proper IRQ on DMA for GF1, then for ESS, test all settings and crack on to another step. So I will update system files and reboot the rig. I didn't experience any problems, almost all resources were free on my BX and FX setups. The installation program installed drivers, default wavetable patches needed for MIDI to work, on a couple of utilities like TSR program called Ultramid, on ESS Vol for ESS chip volume control. Due to the card having two chips, it's got two programs to control the volume. Ultramix for GF1 on ESS Vol for ESS. There is no bass, treble, 3D, surround or other crap like that to set up. There are really simple command line programs where you can set only volume. You can't even swap left and right channels, but it's just a minor drawback. I couldn't believe how clean the output is. This is the noise level when I boot it into pure DOS. This is clearly the most silent card I've tested so far. Even Yamaha's W1000XG can't compare to the ultrasound extreme. What I was also interested in if the Gravis chip can work together with ESS. It can, only does it flawlessly, either Gravis for MIDI playback and ESS for sound effects or vice versa. It means of course Gravis has to be supported. On now to my usual MIDI test you've been waiting for. You'll find out there are more than two recordings for some games. Depending on the game, one recording is for GF1 with default patches, one with Pro Patches Lite, another one for ESS with Sound Blaster drivers and the last one for ESS with ESS drivers. Warcraft 2 is an example where you can use either ESS, Sound Blaster, Gravis or Pro Patches. Warcraft 2 uses mods drivers, which contain drivers specifically for ESS audio drive. First I tried ESS drivers and then Sound Blaster Pro drivers and to my surprise it sounded completely different, have a listen.
Same goes for Time Commando. ES's driver sounds completely different from Sound Blaster Pro driver. Bioforge hasn't got a native gravity support. You can, however, apply a patch to add gravity support. The problem is, this patch has only support for MIDI playback, so if you've got only gravity sound card, you won't get sound, only music. If you've got an older gravity sound card, that is. Since Extreme can utilize ESS sound chip, or you've got Gravis music on ESS sound. If you don't like Gravis's wavetable, you can set it up as a Sound Blaster Pro or you've got FM music. What an amazing call to this is. Do 1, 2 on Duke 3D work with whatever you choose, Gravis or Sound Blaster.
Another game with Mars drivers. Works perfectly. Moreover, Heroes of Might and Magic 2 is always bloody silent with other sound cards, but it's perfectly fine with Ultrasound Extreme. Another example why to get one. This game is pretty weird. It supports Gravis, but only for sound. There's no option for Gravis in music section. I have of course set it to Sun Blaster Pro and it worked fine.
Sound in Space Quest 5 usually don't work with any sound card on faster systems. Except for Gravis. It works perfectly fine without any problems. TFX is similar to Simon the Sorcerer. Gravis is supported natively, but only for sound. On top of that, you can't even use MIDI music at all if you're using Gravis for sound, only audio CD. So, if you've got a discord version or want the music in the game, you need to use Sound Blaster, which in our case is not a problem.
2 hasn't got a query support, but there's a patch for it. You need to do more than just run the patch though. First, you need Gravis drivers from Miles driver set. I've got those from Discworld. Then copy the drivers to your June 2 directory and then you can run the patch. It replaces the MT32 drivers in the game with the mouse drivers you've just copied. Then you need to run Ultramid program on the C. I'm inclined to call this card the ultimate DOS sound card, but since I haven't tested all sound cards yet, I can't do that. I gotta say though, it's extremely good, almost perfect. Well, let's wrap it up then. I didn't have any problems whatsoever with any of the games I tested. It either used Gravis natively or with some kind of patch, and if it didn't have Gravis support, it worked as a Sound Blaster Pro using ES1688. The only drawback is that the card's not compatible with General MIDI. The output is without a doubt the cleanest of all cards I've tested so far. This part is completely subjective. I fancy it's wavetable. Perhaps the official patch is more than pro patch is light. However, some games like June 2 are pure rubbish, whatever patch said. The ESS chip has very good FM reproduction. It's very similar to actual OPL3. Most of the time you won't know the difference unless you want to use game CSS drivers. The installation is extremely easy and straightforward. One of the easiest out there. Well, there are not that many utilities that come with the card. The most important is volume control and is there and working fine. Moreover, who needs crap like surround and 3D sound in DOS games? And that's it for today. This is one of the best sound cards in my collection. Maybe even the best one, period. But it's yet to be found out. See you lot next time.